Hey everyone, Coach Dan here. Uh, so it's been great. We had a, we've had some great sessions so far in the mornings, and now I'm just gonna do a quick recap or review of some of the things that we've done each week. That way, you guys can not only be able to practice it on your own time, but remember all the details and things that we've been doing. That way, you can really get them ingrained into your game in preparation for the season. Okay, so the first thing that we're really gonna talk about uh, is our triple threat game. Um, so just real quick, obviously triple threat, three things we can do out of it, that's why it's a triple threat. We can shoot, we can drive, dribble, and we can pass the ball. Okay, so we have to be a threat to do all these things. So obviously we all know what the triple threat is. You have both hands near, on the ball. I say there's three points of contact. I got my right hand, my left hand, and a part of my body, okay? So usually that's right beside the hip, tucking the ball in. So this is my triple threat position. From here, if I want, I can dribble and attack. From here, if I want, I can pull up into a shot. And from here, I can also go ahead and make a pass, right? I can do whatever I want, those three things, out of this position right here. So this is my triple threat. Two hands on the ball, third point of contact is right here by my hip, okay? Every time we switch or move in different positions of the triple threat, we always need to have three points of contact, okay? So whether it's in my right hip, I'm trying to attack to my right. If I switch to my left hip, I'm trying to attack to my left. Doesn't matter what I'm doing. If I'm doing a jab step, I'll back up a bit for you. If I'm doing a jab step and I jab, third point of contact is now my knee. Okay, always gotta have three points of contact. So from my hip, I'm jabbing to my knee, okay? If I'm trying to make a pass fake, I still gotta have a third point of contact. As I come up and I make that fake, okay, after I bring the ball back, my third point of contact is my shoulder. If I just go get a rebound, as soon as I, ooh, as soon as I get that rebound and I clasp the ball, my third point of contact will be my chin and my chest, right here, okay? So you always wanna keep that in mind. We always wanna have three points of contact. Okay, in general, not all the time, but usually, for the most part, when we're in our triple threat, there has to be a third point of contact that we can rely. Reason being is because when the ball is deflected, if anything happens, we fumble, it can bounce off our body and back to our hands. If I have the ball right here on my shoulder and the defender hits it off my body, back of my hands. If I do a jab step, I get the ball jab, the defender knocks it, it's off my body, back of my hand. Does that make sense? So we want to have that third point of contact. Whereas if I jab, I'm out here, knocks it, it's gone out of my hands. I'm not gonna get the ball right now. <laughs> but anyways, gotta have three points of contact, all right? All right, so now we've established a third point of contact. We're gonna talk about uh, just positioning on the court first before we move on to talking about um, other things that you do, such as jabbing and pivots and all that. So one thing I tell the boys, something I've told you guys already, is you gotta win your battle. You gotta win the battle of the position. Okay, think about your, where you're a threat, all right? If you're a three-point shooter, that's your range. If, you can, if, you're, uh, if your range is a free throw line, then that's your game. You gotta play based on your range, okay? Myself is a threat. You guys can see the three-point line right here. I'll use the high school line right here. It's a high school line for you guys. If you're a threat from the three-point range, okay, if you wanna be a threat to attack the hoop, you don't wanna go too far away from the line when you catch the ball, all right? So we'll just talk about this real quick. Where would it be ideal? If the closer I am to the hoop, the better it is for me. Okay, ideally, I don't want to catch the ball way out here, which a lot of us are still doing. Okay, we don't want to catch the ball too far out. Reason being, I'm not a threat from there anymore. Okay, remember, it's triple threat. I can't shoot from that far, and if I, if, if I can't shoot from that far, I don't want to catch the ball that far. Okay, ideally, if I can get the ball in here, why not? Right? This, I'm way more of a threat to attack the hoop to make a quick bounce pass to a player or shoot the shot from inside the, inside the three-point line at the free throw line. So think about that. Win the battle of the position. If your defender is sleeping on you, he's way back in here, and you're at the three-point line, don't stay at the three-point line. Crawl in, creep in, okay? Gain as much territory, sorry. Gain as much territory as you can towards the basket before you then establish your position. All right, so that's just a quick uh, tip about positioning. So we'll talk about receiving a pass first, and then what we do after we get the pass, and after we get rid of the ball, what do we do next? Okay, so we're going to that uh, sequence. So obviously, first and foremost, I want the ball. So we already talked about positioning where I should be on the court, okay? My defender's sleeping on me. Maybe, if that's the three-point line, the yellow line, maybe I'll call for the ball right here, okay? If he's tight on me, now what do I do, okay? I don't want to establish myself too far out because I'm not a threat, right? So we talked about the iron bar. 
We all remember the iron bar, it's real simple. One hand is up like a bar, okay? Like this, all right? It's like a bar right there into my defender. The other hand is out looking for the pass, asking for the ball. This is my target hand right here. This is where I want the pass, okay? That's what we call the iron bar. Real simple, something you must understand because it applies to so many different concepts of the game, offense and defense, and we'll go more into that later, okay? Iron bar, so your feet are wide, you're low, you're in an athletic stance, one arm up, and the defender, now it's not extended, that'll be a foul, it's just up to keep him off you, and then the other hand out here. All right, now if the defender is still reaching across, the hands might come across here, right? The defender's hand might be here trying to deny the pass. That's why you gotta ask for the ball out here. Players, when you make a pass, give it to the target. Don't give it to my chest, give it to where I'm asking for because there's a reason I'm asking for the ball out here because my defender's on the inside, of course, right? So I ask for the ball out here on the pass. When the ball's passed here, I can't just stand here and get it. I need to jump to the ball, okay? So I'll give you a quick demonstration. If I'm over here, all right, I'm calling for the ball. Let's see it. My, uh, the player's over here. Defender's right here. Hoops over here for now. I'm denying the guy off me. I'm, I'm holding him back. Calling for the ball here. When I receive that pass, I need to jump to the ball. I have to jump to the ball. It's not a huge hop. It's just two feet, one feet, okay? It's real simple. It's all I'm doing here. Boom, jump into the ball. Reason being, my defender is trying to get that ball as much as I'm trying to get that ball. Okay, so I need to take that extra um, caution to make sure I get to the ball first. Okay, if I just stand there and let the ball come to me, chances are a defender might come, take that once again. I don't have a third point of contact. Sometimes I might not even have that second point of contact. Defender's going to steal it. Okay, so I need to make sure I get to that ball and put it right on that third point of contact. Okay, right on my hip. So that's what you want to do. Ask for iron bar. Okay, ask for the ball away from the defender. When you receive the pass, don't just catch it there. Jump to it, that way you can have a third point of contact. It might even be at the shoulder ready to pass right away. Okay, so that's what you wanna do when you receive the pass. All right, now let's just talk about the feet real quick. Wherever the ball is, your feet faces the ball. All right, so the ball, let's say it's in the corner, the hoop's right here, if you didn't know that already. Ball's in the corner behind me, okay? If I'm on the wing here, I wanna be facing the ball. Of course, I might not be the next pass, but I gotta be facing the ball. If the ball's in the corner here, and I'm on this wing, my feet, my body is facing the ball. Okay, my iron bar is up. I'm asking for the ball out here, away from the inside, okay? If the ball's over here at the top, and I'm on the right wing here, I got my iron bar up here, my body's facing the ball, asking for the ball to be passed away from the defender, away from the inside. On the pass, I would then hop to it, I have the ball now on my inside foot, I mean uh, on my outside hip, sorry, and now I can start to play out of my triple threat game, okay? So now let's talk about what we do after we've received the pass in the triple threat game. Well, it's a simple phrase, catch and what, pass and what, okay, what's the next thing? This is how you increase your... Um, speed of reading the game, your intelligence, your IQ, okay, you have to know the next step. If you don't know the next step, you won't be able to read the game with how it's flowing, and on defense, if you don't know the next step that the other team's going to do, you're not going to be able to make that steal or stop the shot, okay, you got to be able to see the next step by thinking what is coming next, okay, so we kept it simple, if you don't know what next, just jab, catch and jab, real simple, this will shift the defender off and it will get you engaged to be ready to blow by your defender if he uh, tries to reach for the steal, and I'll go through that right now, okay. Actually, I'll keep it nice and close. I catch the ball here. As soon as I catch the ball, I want to jab to the opposite knee. Okay, if I count on my left hip, I receive the pass from my left. I jump to the ball. Boom, catch and jab. That's the first thing I want to do. If I caught from the right side, iron bars over here. Okay, defenders on my left side. I ask for the ball here. As soon as I catch the ball, catch and jab. That's the first thing I want to do. This will get me engaged. Because a lot of players catch the ball, first of all, they're relaxed, they're not in an athletic stance, they're holding it casually, they can't attack, they can't shoot, the only thing they can do is pass, and sadly, most times, they're not even looking for the pass, their eyes are on their defender, rather than looking for the teammates that's trying to cut back door or screen away. Okay, so catch and jab. If you don't know, if you don't know anything else to do, catch and jab. We can also do other things. We could catch and pump fake, right? As soon as I catch that ball, boom, right here, boom. I could pump fake my shot. The defender gets high on his toes. From that pump fake, I sweep and I blow by, right? I could catch the ball, pass fake, get him shifting. But the point is catch 
and what? <laughs> All right, so you gotta think what's the next thing I can do in the progression after I catch the ball. For me personally, I like to catch, jab, and then pump fake if I didn't, if he didn't bite on the jab. Then I can read him, okay? So for me, it's real simple. If I catch the ball on my left hip, I catch it here, boom, jab, he doesn't shift, I come back, pull up, okay? If he does not come back with me, it's an open jumper, which is why it's key to be in position. If I catch the ball over here, inside, so like facing this hoop, if I catch the ball right here and I cut my jab, pump fake, he has a move, this is like a free throw. I gotta be able to hit this, right? Versus if I caught it like three feet behind the line, that pump fake is useless because I probably can't even hit that and the defender won't bite because of it. So it makes sense why we have to be in the right position. Sorry if I'm talking really fast. <laughs> Try and bear with me. Okay, so catching what? Okay, catching jab, catching what? Okay, so we gotta be thinking what's the next thing. Now here's the reason behind this. This is what you guys gotta be thinking as you're doing this. What is the purpose of me doing this and what is it creating for myself or my teammates? Okay, let's just talk about the jab. When I jab, all right, the point of me jabbing is to read the defender. All right, and we've talked about this. There's different ways, you can, different things you can do after the jab. You can jab and go, you can jab and cross, right? So the jab and go, for those who don't remember, I catch the ball, I jab. If the defender does not move, then I have an open lane. He's not ready to react, I go by him, I blow by, right? If he does shift, I caught the ball, boom, I jab. He shifts over, now I have an open lane to the left, I cross over and I go to my left, okay? So it's just about reading the defender. At the same time, you gotta be seeing where it's an open space. If I jab, catch the ball, if I jab to my right, the defender has shifted to the right, I've created an open lane. This does not mean I have to drive down the lane. This might be a pass, okay? And this is why it's important. Look at the scenario. I have an offensive point guard. I'm on the wing on offense. We set up on our offense. I'm in my iron bar position. I ask for the ball away from the defender while holding them back. Point guard gives me a great pass just outside the line. I jump to it and I jab, okay? On the jab, my point guard is now cutting back door. But because I had an effective jab, my defender has not shifted to my right. There's an open lane for me to drive, but better yet, my point guard cutting has an open lane. I give him a beautiful pass, okay? So you gotta think more than just yourself more than just what's happening between you and your defender. By creating that space, that extra foot or two of space from shifting the defender, you now have a, you now have a wide open bounce pass you can give to your point guard or whoever that's cutting in, or your post player who's inside doing a great job sealing his man. Okay, so it makes it easier to be able to make that entry pass. So catching what? What's the next thing you wanna do, all right? Something you gotta think about, then obviously add to that. For me, I catch, jab, and then pump fake usually, and I play it off of that. Okay, so that's the process. What's gonna happen after I catch? What's the next step? And what is it creating for myself or the teammates around me? All right, all right. Okay, let's talk about passing now, okay? So. Uh, I'll just kind of speed through this. Passing seems to be a simple thing, but it is a technical skill we all have to be able to, to do, okay? So first and foremost, it's a few different passes, and I'll just go through them as a crash course. We have the push pass, okay, where I'm pushing the ball with one hand. I'm just pushing it forward with one hand. It's almost like shooting a shot, but going straight in front of me. So I'm here, right hand push pass, I push it forward. Left hand, same thing, okay? And with my footwork, how I like to step is I like to have my opposite foot in front, okay? So as I push, I can now, if I need to step forward with the same foot, so if I push with my right hand, I can step with my right foot forward to get me more thrust if I need. So I like to stand like that, push, and if I need, I can step forward to push into it more for more power. Okay, we have the chest pass, real simple, same thing, two hands though, okay? Same thing, you can step with the foot for more power, you can stand still, doesn't matter, but it's two hands on the ball, like this, and as you push it forward, as you push it forward, your fingers are coming out like that, okay? So you're coming, you have the ball, you're pushing it out, thumbs are pointing down, and you're releasing just like that, okay? So that's the, that's the push pass, all right? Uh, or chest pass, sorry. We have an overhead pass. On the overhead, it's not soccer. We're not bringing it behind our back, okay? Not behind our head. We're just coming right over our head, boom, and, and thrusting it right there. So I'm here, just right over my head, and I'm thrusting it, okay? So you're gonna have to have some power 
all right? If you don't have enough power, do more push-ups, do more tricep dips on your counter in the bathroom or wherever, all right? Gotta get stronger. Gotta get that power to thrust it forward. Reason why I don't wanna bring it over my head, because think about this, in soccer, there's nobody behind them when they do the inbound pass. They can bring it as far back as they want. And basketball's not quite the same. As I'm here, I might be going to make that pass, and somebody, let's say I beat my defender, right? I did an in and out, beat him. As I'm making that pass, he might reach from behind me, tip that ball out of my hands. So crucial, don't bring the ball behind your head. Yes, eight out of 10 times, it won't make a difference. It won't. But that two out of 10 times just might cost you a game one day. So better just to do it the right way, the first time, okay? So here, boom, right over your head, right there. Nice, strong pass. Now here's the key. All your passes need to be like a bullet. They need to be a straight line, okay? Even if it's a bounce pass, it should be a bam, bam. Okay, a straight bullet line. We don't want to see no rainbow passes. Okay, we don't. Why? It's real simple. It's slow. It's slow. If the ball is taken three seconds in the air versus one second straight across, two things happen. One, you might lose your opportunity or you usually do lose your opportunity. Two, it gives defenders an extra second to react to steal the ball. Okay, so we don't, we don't want any slow passes. The only time you ever want to see a a, a lob pass, not even really a rainbow, but just a slight curve. You always want to keep it as low as possible. In my in my uh, experience, I've only seen two scenarios. One, when a full court break, right? You got the outlet to the wing, and you're making a full court pass all the way for uh, for um, a layup, right? I just call it a touchdown pass, right? So you're throwing that like a QB looking for the touchdown. Second scenario, where you have to skip it from one half of the court to the other half, like from the wing to the corner, or you're trapped in the corner, you gotta get it out to the other corner or the other wing, you have to get it over like the three, four defenders in the middle, okay? So of course, you gotta lob it a little bit higher. Other than those situations, I don't understand or know any other scenarios where you really need to do a lob pass. I might be wrong, but I can't think of any right now off the top of my head, okay? So always a straight pass, bullet pass that's how we make our passes okay we can also have a bounce pass same thing as a chest as a push pass just simply on the ground it's just bouncing it okay um, there's other ways you can make a pass too don't worry about this now okay it's not fundamentals but if you have a defender in front of you you can add a spin on the ball that way you can push it just past the, um, the player's arms and leg and still have enough of a spin. That way it will go to the target that you want it to go to. So don't worry about that if you don't know what I'm talking about. For those who do, it's something good to practice and it is useful now and then. There's also the behind the back pass. Most effective when you're on a two on one break and you have a defender right on your side, okay? You're going up strong, defender's right on your side and you have a player, your teammate chilling right behind you. You can just go dump it right behind your back right behind your back to your teammate to be able to receive the pass. So yes, not a fundamental uh, pass, but something that is still needed to work on eventually and can get you an extra two, four points a game. And it does happen. Okay, so just pass it. Now, let's talk about the windows, okay? So we have four quadrants. So look at the defender. This is your average defender. His arms are wide and open, okay? There's four windows, one here, one up here, one over here and one down there. Okay, those are the four windows and that's where we want to pass the ball. Typically, closer to the body. Okay, so if I'm making the pass, I don't want that ball whizzing over here. I want the ball whizzing right here, over the shoulder. Reason being, if it goes closer to the hand, this is all I have to do as a defender to deflect it. Let's do that. But if it's right over my shoulder, I gotta go all the way there to deflect the pass. Does that make sense? So you wanna bring it nice and tight in the window right over the shoulders or under the armpits. That's where you wanna be making your passes, okay? So it's just uh, one thing we talked about. Another thing is pump faking the passes, all right? So if I'm here, I'm on the, uh, offense, I got the ball, okay, I'm in triple third position, now I wanna pump and slide. That's the phrase I use, pump and slide, okay? So as I have my four quadrants, my four windows, I can make a pass, I pump it in there, and then I bring it out and just slide to the next spot. Pump, slide, pump, slide, pump, slide, pump, slide, and when we slide across, typically, you don't want to bring it across the body. Now, it depends. For me, sometimes I do because it's faster, but typically for you guys right now, don't bring it across your body. Why? That's where the defender's arms are, okay? So as you pump the ball, when you slide it, bring it 
in that square formation. Okay, so if I want to go to the top right, top left corner for me, your top right, I believe, and I'm in my top, uh, bottom right corner, as I pump, I want to come up across like that, then make that next pump. Okay, down across, pump. Okay, pump, pump, pump. I don't want to bring diagonally because that's where the defender's arms are and can deflect that pass. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. You always want to bring it um, in that square formation. All right. One more thing, pivoting, okay? And this is more than just passing, this is still in the triple threat game, okay? Still in the fundamentals of the triple threat. Now, how I pivot is important too. My rule of thumb is never turn away from the court, okay? So if I'm in here, I'm at the three-point line here, okay? I just received the pass, I jab, all that good stuff. I'm now pass faking. I never want to pivot this way. Never. Reason being, that second I turn, and my back is facing the hoop and the court, I might miss a player cutting back door. Now there are times where it's best to do that, and we'll talk about that in a second, but generally speaking, if avoidable, never do it, okay? If avoidable, always face the court. That way you can see what's going on, and you can see teammates around you, all right? So I'm here, I'm now jabbing, I'm in triple threat, I'm making my passes, but I gotta use my pivots, okay? If I can pivot over here, I might have an open pass. So it's one thing just to make my pass fakes in my windows. It's another thing if I step into it, now I have an extra like three feet of extension to make a pass. Defender must adjust. If I'm out here and he doesn't adjust, it's an open pass. If he does adjust, defender will be standing here now. As I pivot over, that's another pass. Now I want you to see this, okay? From here, boom. That's how far my extension is over to here. Boom, okay? That is about eight feet of room. Maybe not, I don't know, I'm not very good at measuring. <laughs> but the point is that's a lot of room, okay? So if you can use your pivots effectively, it will make a big difference to how your passes are in the game, okay? So I'm here, I'm pass faking, up here, over, boom, down low, boom, up, down, right? So I'm pivoting over and under, over and under, okay? Now as you do this, Still consider the three points of contact. I didn't really do that well, but watch. As I go over on my shoulder, okay, down low. As I come back under, it's at my hip. I can pass fake up low, okay, but I'm still bringing it back to that third point of contact. Okay? Pivots. Now let's talk about when you can turn around. Typically speaking, before we even talk about that, let me show you something else. Because typically speaking, the reason you would even want to turn around is because of a lack of space. Last week. So this is the thing. You have a defender on you. Remember, he wants the ball as bad as you want the ball. If, in fact, he wants it more because he doesn't have it. You have the ball, so you're the one who's comfortable. He's not. Okay, so understand this. There's going to be pressure. You got to understand this. So now, you're here, you picked up the ball, you're now dead. You got to create a pass now, okay? But the player is all over you. You have to step into them, all right? So let's say I have two defenders, okay? Just watch my feet real quick. Your feet is here and here. This is the two positions of the feet. So they're standing like this, and they're all over me, okay? I'm now dead facing them. First way to try and create space. I protect the ball. One, two, three. Three points of contact. I get low, I'm athletic, I'm strong, I have a balanced base. I step into him, I don't lean, I step into him, I come then up, balance, I'm never leaning over, my entire body's always in front or behind, I mean, my knee, okay? I'm low, if you're not low, you, you gotta fall down, okay? I'm low, step in, and I come up, elbows up, and then I release. Okay, I'll show you one more time. I'm low, I step in, elbows up, and release. And as I release, I'm, I'm twisting. Okay, so I'm giving him like a one-two combo. So if he wants to get up tight in me, I'm gonna get low, protect the ball first, step in, elbows up, one, two, and release. So if he wants his ball, he's gonna have to go through my elbows first. No, that is not a foul, okay? He's the one encroaching in my space. 
he's the one up in my grill. So as I step in, boom, I'm just creating space. Now here's the thing, just as much as, as much as I'd never leaned over my front knee, I gotta stay behind it. Same way my elbows don't go past my front knee. I'm not trying to elbow him. I'm simply stepping in. I've now claimed this amount of space. That's where my body is. And now I come up one, two. Okay, so I'm up one, two, pivot. And here's the key now. As I pivot backwards, I should not be losing ground. Watch my footwork again. Okay, so defender is here. As I step into him, he might back up a little bit. As the elbows come up, he might go up a little bit. But I should not let him come back all over me. How? As I'm here, as I step in, one, two, I don't want to pivot back here. I'm losing ground. I'm here, he's already trying to get in my space. I gotta step in, one, two, boom. As I pivot, I wanna stay with, my, with the ground that I gained. I wanna stay playing forward to make that pass. If I ever lose ground, that's where I get weak, okay? If I'm here and I'm into a player, if I ever pivot backwards, this is where I'm weak. This is where he can push me back to where he wants me to be, but I gotta play where I wanna be, okay? So I gotta stay strong, always gain ground. As I pivot, even when I go over and under, I'll show you the footwork real quick. As I'm pivoting here, as I go over, all right, when I come back under, I'm not losing ground. That's not what I want. I gotta come back to where I started. So I'm here, as I go over on my pivot, when I come back, boom. Yes, three points of contact, but I'm not losing ground. The whole purpose of this is I need to gain space, I need to gain ground. That's another way to create space. So the first way we just talked about is I'm here, I'm low, he's encroaching in my space, he's trying to make me back up. I need to get strong by getting low, step into him, I'm ready protecting the ball, step in, elbow up, boom, back to where I want to be. Okay, if he's still in my space, then I can now, instead of stepping between his legs, I can step past his leg. Okay, so you gotta imagine there's the feet here, feet here. Instead of stepping in between now, I'm gonna come step past his legs. Okay, watch the ball again. I'm, I'm not bringing the ball across, I'm bringing it over past his legs, and that's where I can attack, make my pass, and if he does move forward, I bring it back under. Okay, watch how I move the ball. I'm not just bringing it across. Okay, I'm bringing it over, and then I'm bringing it under. You guys see that? I'm never bringing it across my chest. Over the arms, under by the knees. Always to the third point of contact. On a jab, third point of contact, okay? making the pass what next okay pass and what okay so real simple this one thing everybody knows pass and cut okay but I want you to think more you know what let's just keep it simple pass and cut all right if that's where it's at right now just think pass and cut I prefer when people are just more creative and think pass and find the space because sometimes the space is not always at the basket especially if you're playing like a four out one in offense you can't necessarily cut all the time although you can as well it all depends right so pass and create space is what I really like to think okay usually for me I think the easiest way to create space almost 100% of the time is a screen away all right if you can do it effectively okay but we'll just talk about the pass it and getting by your defender so real simple okay we already talked about pass it about the four windows about making a good pass if I'm making a good bounce pass maybe I'm gonna step around make that pass okay if I'm making a chest pass I'm gonna come make that chest pass okay or a push pass whatever it is okay so I'll come other ways you can make passes I didn't really go into details about this it's not really fun fundamentals at least not the basics of it is uh, I just call it a lateral pass and it's just you catch that ball and you just make a pass sideways like this so you have a player right beside you and you just go in this motion just sideways real simple same thing I'm going in this motion sideways so it's just a lateral pass and it is very effective especially when you're rotating the ball around the perimeter you catch that ball and you don't have time to waste pivoting and making a chest pass or push pass because those are all facing forward. It's time you catch that ball, boom, it's a lateral pass to your side and it can be used in any way. It's just really just making a pass based on without uh, rotating your body. So that could be receiving that pass and making a pass, bounce pass sideways or a dump pass behind you, right? Some people, if you want to get fancy one day, you're going on a fast break, you can pass the ball behind you. Uh, 
behind you through the legs, but the point is just be able to pass without having to turn your body, okay? So that's where the lateral pass comes from. Still pretty basic stuff once you understand what it's really all about. Okay, now what happens? I pass the ball, sweet, what's next, <laughs> okay? Now I have to create space. I can't stand here. And this is the issue a lot of players have. They release the ball and they freeze. They, they kind of bounce around. They turn. They hesitate. We can't do that because every second you waste is an opportunity you're losing. It's a part. It's a principle of life too. If you waste time in life, you're going to lose multiple handfuls of opportunities that you never would have expected to have and you will never now receive because you wasted time and you hesitated on chances that you have. Okay, and this is why it's important to plan ahead to know what the next step is. This is why when I catch the ball, I got to know what's my process. Jab, pump fake, what next? If I make a pass, am I going to screen away? I got to know what's happening next. I got to process this ahead in my mind, and this is how you get to read the game faster. Because once you can think that fast, you can see what other people will be thinking and where the ball's going to be going next, okay? And this applies to life too, okay? You got to think ahead. You're in a high school now, what's the next plan? What do you got to do? What kind of job do you need to get to make enough money for, uh, for your university tuitions, right? Right? Where you're going to go to school, what, you know, you got to start thinking ahead of these things. What do you want to do as a career path and what's the best school for that? Once you can plan ahead, you can make your moves and you can do that based on what your future is, you have a better chance of getting that future that you want, right? Same thing applies to the game. What's the future you want in the game? You want a future of a win or a future of a loss? You got to dictate your future based on planning ahead with the moves that you're going to uh, get from what we've been talking about today. Catching what? Passing what? So the passing what, okay? So let's talk about cutting real quick. There's something called a fish swim that every player needs to be able to perform. Okay, it's real simple. It's just a way to get past your defender and it's in a swimming formation. Okay, in a swimming motion. So I have now passed the ball. I wish I had a, uh, a defender here or something. In fact, I'm going to use this pole right here because it'll be a lot easier if you can see me demonstrate this on a physical object. Okay, so this is my defender. Say hello to defender pole. <laughs> Alright, so I've now made my pass. I make my pass. As soon as I make my pass, I have a body in front of me that I need to get by. He wants the ball as much as I want the ball. We have to remember this is a battle. This is not a game, this is a battle. So as I'm getting past my defender, I have to create three touches, okay? One, oh, sorry, not three touches, uh, two. It's real simple. So I've made my pass here. The defender's arms are also sticking across like this. Okay, so he's trying to get the ball. He's like, this is what the defender's doing. And now my body is the pull as he's leaning across. So now as I'm making my pass and I'm trying to get by him, my first contact is my hand. Okay, the hand that is closer to where I want to go. So if I'm trying to go to my left, that's my left hand. If I'm trying to go to the right, it's the right hand. So for this, it's going to be my left hand. Okay, I make my pass. One. Okay, on one, I'm now going to swim across. It's like I'm swimming in the ocean, right? So one, I swim across the body so I don't foul him. Two, and now I'm giving him that last thrust as I'm pushing. Three is my hand opening up here. Okay, so three motions. Two contacts on him, three motions. I've made my pass. Okay, I swim the first hand. One, got to be strong, firm. Don't grab him, it's just one. Remember, anytime you extend, it's most likely a foul. So keep your arm bent, keep everything uh, close to your body. One, you're swimming over the defender. Two, okay? And two, your arm's down, you're now pushing off the defender with your third uh, motion, with your hand sticking out, calling for the ball. Now remember when I talked about iron bar being a, um, a fundamental aspect of the game? This is where it applies to on a cut, okay? Just as much as I call for the ball here, I now go back door. Let's say we're cutting back door. I go swim. One, two, three, and now look what I've done. I have the iron bar on the opposite side. Okay, let's say I was asking for the ball here, or I made the pass here, or whatever happened. Okay, and now I'm gonna go swim over the defender. I've made the pass and I'm cutting. I go one, two, and three. Iron bar again, okay? Obviously in this motion, as soon as I create that third contact and I blow by him, I'm gonna sprint away, okay, while I'm still asking for the ball in front of me. As I'm cut into the hoop, I'm not gonna put my hand down and just run. I'm gonna cut with my hand in front of me and I can run with this arm. It makes sense. Why? Because I want the ball in front of me, whether it's directly to my hand or a bounce pass because my teammate was trying to pass it um, underneath my play, the defender's hand. Okay, but I got to call for the ball in front of me. It's my target and keep this target hand until I get to the hoop. And we'll talk about how to get out of that in a second.
what to do after I get to the hoop. So that's my cut, okay? I pass the ball, I cut to the hoop. All right, let's rotate this again. So now let's say, let's say I don't wanna cut to the hoop, okay? I can go screen away, okay? I can do whatever I want. I can do whatever I want, okay? I could just go pass, and let's say if it's a far position, fill a different spot. But typically you wanna create space. So they'll probably screen it away if you're not cutting to the hoop, okay? So. Okay, so we're going to talk about screens real quick. So the the uh, universal symbol for a screen, fist up. Okay, so as I'm going to set my screen, now listen, we got to talk about the details now. Okay, so some of us don't really understand the pick and roll. When you do a pick and roll or a screen away or whatever it is, anytime you set a screen, if you are going to roll, you have to seal the defender. Okay, I, I need you to understand this. You have to seal. The defender all right let's talk about that okay so I'm coming here fist up I set the screen my teammate has to wait until I set the screen okay I know it's a lot of details but you got to catch everything take notes if you have to I come and he does not go until I set the screen because if he goes too early two things happen one either it's a moving screen if the ref catches it or secondly the player doesn't even get open because I haven't even set a screen. It's like, imagine this. Imagine if a wall is coming towards this player. Okay, the screen's a wall. The screen's, uh, the wall's coming. Okay, the net's coming. The trap's coming. I'm here going to hold this defender. But before I get my hands on him, before the wall falls on him, before the net traps him, you move and he follows you and he gets away from the trap. Okay, so you gotta wait till the trap is set. When the trap is set, then you can get away. Okay, if you, if you leave too early, it's, it's useless, a, a useless trap, okay? So I'm coming to set my screen, boom, go. I set the screen, I say go, I don't have to, the player can just read it, but it's the easiest way to let the player be patient. Wait till they say go, okay? You can set your screen down here. I like to set my screen up here and you'll see why in a second, okay? You set your screen, you're wide, you're a bit low, you're not just standing this tall because you gotta be strong. So you're low, maybe you lean a little bit. You're not all over him, but you lean a little bit into the player, okay? You're aggressive. In that position, now the player cuts around you. Here's the deal, whichever way the player cuts, that's the way you roll, okay? So if I'm here and I have an offensive player on this side walking around me, I'm gonna open and roll to that direction, okay? If I set the screen, Okay, and the player's over here rolling that side, he's cutting that side, or he's dribbling the ball around this side of me, then I'm gonna open to that side. Does that make sense? Okay, I gotta open, it's like a door. All right, whichever side he goes to, that's the side he's opening. And I gotta turn on my hinges, which is my right pivot foot right now, and open that door. Okay, so just understand that concept. You open up whichever way he's going. On the roll, we seal and we still initiate the iron bar. Okay, it's, it applies here too. I set my screen, okay? On the roll, let's say I'm going to open up this way to my left, that's where the, def the player on my team is cutting or dribbling, it's this side. So I'm gonna open up this side. As I roll, my inside hand, the hand that is on my pivot foot, that arm is staying as the iron bar to seal off the man, okay? So I'm now here, contact, he goes, I'm creating contact, I'm not pushing, I'm just establishing contact, holding them back as I open up. As I open up, my other hand is here doing what? Yes, you got it, asking for the ball. This is my target hand, okay? So now he gives me a good bounce pass, and now I get the lift, okay? Regardless, if, he's, if I'm setting a screen for a player who's not with the ball, I screen him, he cuts over, I still want to practice the same fundamentals, seal off my man with my arm, and then I r roll open, and then I can run to wherever my, um, uh, my des destination is, okay? But you must seal the man, because once you do, if you run it effectively, it becomes a two-on-one game. Boom, I screen this guy, if it's a good screen, as I seal him and I roll, now it's two offensive players and one defender, who's my defender. And now this one defender has to react quickly. And um, there's obviously good ways to defend a, a screen, pick and roll, or screen away. We might not go over that right now, but the key is set an effective screen, 
roll properly and open up to be able to receive the pass. Okay? That's how you run a, uh, a screen away. Now here's the thing. When you set the screen, you have to read. Okay? As I roll, I'm not just going to turn and run. Okay? I'm boom. Screen seal my man. I'm turning open. As I'm rolling, I got to read my player. So this is why. Let's say we're running the pick and roll. Okay? I come here. I set a screen high. Boom. Go. So he's not going to go this way. I screen him. I roll open. As I roll, I got to read him. If he on the pick and roll on the ball, ball pick and roll, if he dribbles to attack the hoop, I should shadow maybe, trail just to the side. I don't want to take up his space. I could do a pop, a pick and pop, where as I screen, I roll open, I pop back. I just stay here so he can make a pass to the attacks. If he doesn't attack because maybe the defender switched and he's now being shaded off to the three-point line again, I can now roll directly to the basket. Okay, so I set my screen, boom, as I roll open, he pops a little bit higher. I now roll, I sealed off the defender, his defender. My defender switched to take up. If I do a good job sealing him, it's a simple bounce pass up into a layup. Okay, so it's so important to seal your man on the roll. If I'm screening away, I still gotta read what's going on. I come to set that screen, boom. Okay, if my man that I screen goes to the hoop, I fill the spot. If he fills the spot, I go to the hoop, and I'll show what that looks like. If I'm over here on the wing, okay, I have the ball. Let's say I make a pass to the corner, or for four out, maybe I make a pass to the wing if I'm the other guard. I make the pass to my right, okay? I swim over, I'm gonna set a screen to my left, okay? So the swim is on a cut or a screen, doesn't matter. Once you move, you gotta swim past your player. I swim to set a screen. On my screen, boom! I set the screen, if he goes to the spot where I just came from, as I seal on my roll, I open up going to the hoop looking for that bounce pass in for a lip, okay? If he does not go to the spot. So I'm here, I make that pass, I come, swim over, I come, see that screen, go. If he cuts to the hoop, as I roll on my seal, I see him cutting, I'm not gonna go to the spot looking for the pass, boom. On the pass now, if he posts up, I can make an entry pass, or I can catch it, right, swoop through, pull up, I can catch, jab, look for the next pass, right, catching what? So every time I make a pass, passing what? When I get the ball, catch, catching what? Okay, so we gotta get that flow going. That's one thing we really were talking about. Catching what, passing what? Okay, if I set a screen, make sure it's communicated. Player, you must wait until the screen is set. Then as I roll, I seal, open up, iron bar, and I'm looking, I'm reading. Where's my teammate going? If he goes to the hoop, I can pop or fade away if it's an on-ball screen, okay? If he pops up on the on-ball screen, I now roll to the hoop. If it's an off-ball screen, on the screen, roll, iron bar, sealing off the man. As I roll, I gotta read him. If he cuts to the hoop, I fill the spot. If he fills the spot, I cut to the hoop. So really think about spacing. It's all about spacing, okay? Don't worry about the X and O's and the ins and out and where to go. Think space. Where is the space? If you can get that concept in your mind, you should be fine, okay? After I make a pass, create space. I make that pass, what's next? That what should create space. Whether that's me cutting, I've created space where I just was for a player to fill or the player with the ball now to drive. Whether that's me screening away, the player to drive can now has a, uh, the player with the ball now has a lane to drive, or if I screen away, the player who I screen for now has a spot to fill to, or if he cuts to the hoop, I have a spot to fill to, right? As I roll, I'm rolling away from the hoop. If I do an on-ball screen, I'm rolling away from the ball, I mean, sorry. So if he, go, if he drives to the hoop, I can pop and roll right there where's the space right if I screen he goes to the hoop I can go screen away again where's the space so think as soon as I pass the ball I must must create space if you can understand that concept you'll be flying you'll be fine getting the flow of offense okay so that's what's gonna happen every time we pass the ball passing what passing cut passing screen away right we shouldn't be hesitating we shouldn't be stagnant we got to keep moving keep flowing keep going right Okay, okay, 
So now I understand there's not there's uh, still a lot of things that we could have gone over for the fundamentals, but I'm just gonna kind of crash through a couple of them. For example, how do we come around the screen? So if you're getting an off-ball screen, there's a couple ways you can come around it. You can curl it, you can pop, and you can fade. Okay. For those who don't know what that is, just go YouTube search it. Okay. Curl basically you're coming close around the screen, going for the layup. If you pop, it basically means you're coming off the screen for a jumper usually, or to get the ball to the three-point line. If you fade, it's usually because the defender is cheating under the screen and now instead of using the screen you're just fading off it further away from the ball because the defender is going closer to the ball okay um, key to this every time you get into a screen you got to come close to it okay you got to come close shoulder to shoulder that way the, the defender can't just sneak by all right some other things we didn't talk about just the footwork of uh, when we catch the ball and uh, when we're going to, a, to attack, right? So which foot do we move first? Uh, for example, on the cross step, when I do my cross step, if I jab to my right, so my left foot's the pivot foot, if I'm gonna cross to my left, I gotta pick up my right foot and go over again, okay? If I jab and go, I gotta do a nice short jab first, defender doesn't move, it's the same foot that goes again, and it's a bit further. So we didn't talk too much about positioning, but uh, we have in the season, but we, we didn't review that here. Uh, once again, go YouTube that jab and go jab and cross i'm sure you can find something online okay another thing we haven't really talked about is the footwork on our shots the pull-ups okay real simple pivot off the inside foot so what do i mean by that if i have the ball the hoop on my right and i'm gonna go to the to turn to shoot i gotta pivot off my right foot because that's the inside foot that's the foot closest to the hoop then left then pull up if i'm like this and the hoop's on my left now i catch the ball Dribble, I gotta go left, that's the inside foot, that's my pivot foot, pivot off my left foot, left to right, into a pull up, okay? So, hoops on the right, right left, hoops on the left, left right, okay? Other things we didn't really talk about in the video, which we did in the season, is if I'm gonna go attack to my left, off one dribble, I'm gonna go, let's say, I jab right, I now cross step left, because the hoop is now gonna be on my right, because I'm moving to the left of, to my left, it's gonna be simply right, left, pull up, okay? And the key is push the ball in front of you, get distance and that one, two steps. All right, so I didn't get into much detail about that right now. Hopefully in the future, in a week or two, or a week or so, I'll get more details on that. Um, a few things maybe I didn't talk about. Here are the details of finishing. Uh, and this one thing we're gonna work on next week as well, finishing, uh, the footwork, staying on balance, staying low, how to really have an effective pump fake. When you finish, where to aim for it. I know we understand that you know you gotta aim for the corner of the square, but really where, should, should we be aiming higher, lower, further, back? It depends on the scenario, right? Is there a spin on the ball? Which way do we spin? Which hand do we use to finish? A lot of details into that. Once again, do your homework, ask coaches, ask the players, search online. Don't just rely on me, don't just rely on yourself and the friends around you, keep searching. That's how you get better, okay? One more thing that we also didn't touch really is about motions of cuts. V cuts, L cuts, ways to get open. We didn't really touch too much on that. Something we can work on a little bit later, okay? Um, reading the game, we talked a bit about the steps. There's also more details we can go into reading the game, um, especially from the defensive standpoint. For example, rotation. How do you rotate on defense when a player gets beat? Who goes where and when, right? How far do you commit? When do you commit, right? So talking about all those different things on defense rotation, still got to uh, talk a lot about that. Um, yes, it's a bit more past fundamentals, but to me, and as you get better, these are fundamental things of the game, all right? Um, so those are a lot of different things. The footwork battle, um, actually talked a bit about that. So once again, a lot of things I'll try and bring in for you guys soon, but the key is keep learning, keep searching. Don't just rely on me. If there's something out there that you want to find out, come ask me. If I don't have the answer, find it. I might not take you to the NBA, but I will make you better. And if you want more out of your game and out of life, you got to keep searching. That's what I'm doing, and I'm encouraging you, encouraging you to do the same, all right? So let's keep getting better. Let's keep working hard together. Looking forward to our future in the season and also in life. Take care.